Folks, this is a big one. I am going to do a rundown of all of the Fat Shark receiver modules that I can get my hands on. So I've got right here, right now, the uh, the LaForge, which happens to be the one that I was testing last, so it's in my goggles right now. I've got the Furious True D Diversity from Furious FPV. This here is the standard Next Wave module that you might buy with your goggles from Fat Shark. This one, of course, doesn't have diversity. It's just a, a single antenna module. And this one here is not even a module, uh, but it's so cool and interesting and intriguing that I couldn't resist including it, even though it's more of a, it's a ground station. It doesn't actually go in your goggles. It would go on a tripod. And what makes this so cool and interesting is that it costs like almost $700. I don't know the exact, it's, it's in the high sixes. And so when I saw that, I thought, well, what are you going to get for 700 freaking dollars? I have to know. And so this, this is actually a loner. I'm not getting to keep these. These were all sent by the vendors. Thank you very much to Ubad, who sent the LaForge, and uh, Furious, who sent the Trudy, and I bought this one out of pocket. I also have on the way, they're not here yet, but I didn't want to hold up making this. I also have on the way the two pineapples module, and I have also on the way the real ACC module from Banggood. Let's talk for a minute about what diversity is and why diversity is a big deal and, and why you want diversity. Diversity means that you have two receivers, two antennas, one, two, one, two, of course, one, two, yeah, right? And, and you can put a different antenna on each of the receivers. And the antennas can cover a different shape of area and the receivers will switch back and forth between whichever antenna has the best signal at any given moment. So the way this is commonly done is you'll have one omnidirectional antenna. And the way to think of an omnidirectional antenna is that it receives equally from all 360 degrees around itself. And on the other side, you'll have a directional antenna. This is an 8 dBi directional patch. And the way to think of a directional antenna is that it receives better in front of itself than behind itself. So it will have very good reception in like a, a cone, if you will, in front of itself, maybe a 90 degree or 110 degree cone. I don't know the exact beam width of this one. It'll receive very well in a cone in front of itself and not very well behind itself, okay? Now, the, I, the reason that's a big deal is because this antenna is going to give you more coverage in the direction it's facing, but you don't get something for nothing. It's going to give you less coverage in the direction it's not facing. So you wouldn't generally want to rely on this antenna exclusively unless you knew for a fact you were only going to be flying in front of yourself. And so one of the uh, recommendations I've seen for some people is to set yourself up not at the, the sort of you know, if you imagine a flight field you know, as a rectangle, right? A lot of times people want to be sort of on the 50-yard line right? But one of the recommendations I've heard is that actually it's better to set yourself up down in the corner and aim your directional antenna at the field, right? So you've got the whole field within the beam width of your directional antenna. Well, if you have diversity, you don't actually have to choose, okay? With a diversity setup, you can have an omni antenna over here and a directional antenna over here. When you're flying behind yourself, you ha you're on the omni antenna, and when you're flying in the direction that this antenna is pointed, you switch over and you're on this antenna. And so basically you would want to stand and face so that this antenna was facing at the big stand of trees that you need to fly behind or the building. And that'll help you punch through that obstacle. But then when you fly behind yourself, you don't get a dropout because this guy takes over. Okay, so that's the advantage of diversity. Now we're talking here about two antenna diversity and we've got an omni and a directional and that's a common way of doing it. But in fact, uh, in the RF world, it's very common to have, for example, you could have two directional antennas at 90 degrees to each other, and each of them, if they had a 90 degree beam width, you can see that they would cover a 180 degree arc, right? And in fact, you can have more than two antennas. Oops, sorry about that. You could have more than two antennas. You could have four antennas in a rectangular pattern or eight antennas in an octagonal pattern. Diversity doesn't have to be limited to two antennas, but the modules we're dealing with today are all two antenna diversity, that's the simplest kind, and that's what we're seeing mostly within the world of FPV video. There is a product that is coming out someday, maybe soon, I'm so excited to see it, and it is the uh, Overlord, it's called, and it's coming from Hobby King, and it is, I think it's an eight antenna, maybe only a six antenna, it essentially has six of these patch, I think it's six, six of these patch antennas in a hexagon, 
and it's six-way diversity. And the advantage of that is that you get the extended coverage of the patch antenna in all directions. So it's like having, almost like having an omni antenna, just a much, much more powerful omni antenna. That is not a product that I have on my bench. I would kill to get it on my bench and try it out because that's actually a standard thing that's done in the RF world. If you look up at a cell phone tower, you'll see that they generally have the antennas three in a row arranged in a triangle. Those are called sector antennas and that's what's called a sectorized array. And those sector antennas are each covering a small slice and they're all it, well, they're probably not set up as diversity. They're set up as something more complicated than diversity. But the basic principle of using several directional antennas in an array to do individual pie slices of a circle and still get the whole circle is not a novel idea in the world of RF. And it's very, very exciting to see it being applied to the world of FPV. Hopefully, that's a product I will get on my bench soon. But I don't have it yet. So diversity. Diversity is good because it lets you use two antennas and you get the best of both worlds. As opposed to something like this, which has no diversity, you can only use one antenna and you have to pick and choose. You either have to get a strong signal in front of you and a weak signal behind you or a mediocre signal everywhere, but you can't have them both. Diversity is a good thing. Another thing that's going to separate these modules from each other is the basic RF design of the radio itself. Things like the sensitivity of the receiver, the, the cleanliness of the amplifier on the receiver, and other topics that are sort of in the field of RF engineering, right? Uh, that may be, perhaps, why the Clearview is $700. Perhaps it has very, very good silicon, is what they call it. They'll say, it's, oh, it's got good silicon. They don't literally mean that the silicon itself is of high quality. They mean that the amplifier and all the electronic circuitry is extremely well-designed and well-tuned, and it's able to receive a signal in, in areas where other devices might not be able to receive it. Uh, I've been told by UBAD that the LaForge uses the standard sort of, it's based on the standard 5808 open source project that that the TrueD and the real ACC and the two pineapples, all these devices sort of diverged from that 5808 open source receiver project, but that uh, that UBAD has designed a custom RF front end for the LaForge and, and UBAD claims that that makes a difference. We'll see if that's true. So just because these devices uh, in terms of their user interface might seem similar, the underlying RF components and the design of the, the radio can make a difference in their range. As far as usability goes, one of the things we're going to be looking at is how easy, I mean, the, one of the biggest things that these devices give you is the ability to manage your channels. If you're at a field and somebody is on a channel, can you, can you easily find out what channel somebody's on, whether somebody is on your channel, can you easily get to the channels that you intend to use, switch between them with, conveniently, uh, and all those just basic bread and butter stuff that is so sort of difficult to do with the simple modules like this. Switching bands, uh, having a featured channel set or a favorite channel set, spectating so you can find people who are out there and, and watch them easily, band scanner, these are all features that we'll be looking at in these devices and seeing how they stack up. I'm going to evaluate the power draw. These devices draw more power than the basic next wave module from your battery. And how much more power is it? Some people say a lot. Let's find out if that's true. Ease of installation. We're going to look at ease of installation. Uh, clearly, the, the single-piece modules like the True D are easier to install than the two-piece module like the LaForge. We'll take a look at uh, how that stacks up. Aesthetics, we'll take a look at sort of which ones look the best in the goggles. All right, so that's a, sort of an overview of how this video series is going to go. I'm going to do one video for each of the devices, and then when I'm done, I'll do a wrap-up video. Hope you're looking forward to it. I, sh I know I sure am. This is, <laughs> this is really exciting. I do RF uh, professionally. Uh, mostly Wi-Fi, but not all Wi-Fi. And so this is this kind of testing is like this is almost like my day job, and I really do like it a lot. Uh, never mind getting to play with all these cool toys. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Hope you are too. In the meantime, happy flying.